kind of had to deal with being on the shelf much in his career. You know what? He's handling it very well. You know, I, you know, he's he's in uh, getting his treatment, uh, making sure that he's uh, getting extra treatment. Uh, you know, it's still out out on the field. Uh, Helping the young guys and uh, making sure he's taking taking all his mental reps, which is great. I don't know, you know, I still call him a young guy too, but uh, you know, he he's taking them and uh, he's not missing on, on on his mental reps. I was just gonna say, what does it say about him that you're saying he's helping the younger guys and he's in year two? That's great. I mean, uh, you know, that that's 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 what's so good about about this position. You know, that I'm in as a coach. I got I got some smart guys that enjoy playing football. They, I mean, I say enjoy, they love playing football. They love helping uh, the young guys and making sure that they're doing right. You know, we're a big family in that room. and you know, we know that we have to compete. We're competing against each other for jobs, but we all know that we're family and we go out and we help each other and, and that's gonna make us a better team. You uh, were not a high draft pick. You have some guys who are not high draft picks who are fighting for positions, including KJ Osborne. What does it take for a guy sort of emerge and show he can do it, but he's not one of the chosen ones. You know, you just got to go out each and every day and try to get better, make your plays that you're supposed to make, and be consistent. You know, I think uh, some of these guys are starting to show us that they can be consistent. We can count on them. Uh, you know, when you're when you're that guy that's that's trying to make make hay. I mean, you you come out every day and work your butt off and uh, make good things happen. For you. How's the battle going for the number? It's going well. I mean, I think uh, everybody's uh, up to it. I mean, they understand that, you know, you know, every anybody, like I always tell them, I say anybody can step in and make a play, and I expect you to step in and make a play. I mean, I, t I say this all the time. I mean, whoever's the, the one, two, or three, when, when one of those guys get tired, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count on number four to go in and play like he's a number one, two, or three anyway because that's how I'm going to coach you. Uh, I expect that I want you to have that mindset, that expectation of yourself to go in and if I if coach calls on me, you know, I've got I got to go in and make a play for my team, and and that's part of being a a, a great group of receivers. You probably know Danny Westbrook better than anybody in the building. How is he doing with the extended absence, just waiting to get back out there? You know what? He's doing really well. I mean, he's uh, he's learning. You know, new system for him. Uh, the guys are helping him out. You know. And they know his big thing is is making sure he uh, rehabs and gets his knee back. And I think uh, he's uh, he's taking that very seriously. You know, he wants to get back on on the field as soon as possible. And one thing I know about him that he loves to play football. He's a football player, and it, he, he fits right in with the room because all those guys love to play football. With uh, how difficult it is to evaluate somebody who's had limited reps this year, like he Westbrook. How important will it be for you to kind of draw upon your prior knowledge, kind of determining where he's going to fit on the depth chart? You know what? I, I, that's a big, that's a good question, and, and it's something that I know uh, that I could do because of, of my prior experience with him, and I know what what to expect from him. Uh, but you know, we as coaches, we also would love to see him on the, on the field. You know, and I think uh, whenever it's time for him to get on the field, I think he'll get on the field and show people that you know he can play and. Uh, you know, he, he's going to be a guy that, that could help us. Keenan, what do you remember about coming here in 2018 for the joint workouts and seeing the spark in your facility? Uh, I mean, I enjoyed the facility because we were coming from the dungeon in, in, in Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just to get over here, and one thing I remember was the great weather, like it is right now. Breezy, uh, not a lot of humidity. Coming from Jacksonville, was a lot of humidity. Also, I, what I realized that, you know, I, I know because I've, done joint practices uh, when I was playing that the intensity was going to go up you know and I, I, I kind of made mention of that to my to my guys uh, today is that hey come out here with the mindset of the intensity is going to go up uh, going to go up and it's going to be a, a look it's going to be some collisions every now and then so don't be shocked with with some of the collisions and the intensity so just be ready to play football. Keenan are, are there still techniques or tips that you can show a nine-year vet like Adam Thielen? Always, you know, we like like Adam always said, he's always trying to get better, and that's how I was as a receiver. I was always trying to find a way to master the position, and uh, you know, I you know I'm a big Jerry Rice fan when I was growing up, and when I got in the league, you know, he's always try. He said he was always striving for a perfect game, even though you probably never get a perfect game, but you got to strive for it. And I think Adam has that type of mindset that he's striving to be perfect, 
and I love that because that's that's kind of how I feel. You know, if I can go out and be perfect in all my technique, my assignments, then I know I'll be able to help help, help my team. Talk about the level going up a notch. You've been going against your defense, which is great. What do you tell your guys about learning from Denver these days? What you learned uh, from Denver is that you learned, uh, you've been seeing the same coverages from our defense over and over and over in training but now they're going to be it's going to be a, a, a different a lot of different coverages you got to be able to pick up on your keys you know see your triangles and see how the defense uh change coverages uh see the blitzes it's going to be different blitzes from what what you've seen so it's a big time to pick up on things now in practice so in the, in the game it just happens uh not just instantly and you can get right into it for a rookie like Bruce how big is that jump from the uh, it's going to be a big jump for him because, uh, you know, in college, you kind of see a lot of cover four, maybe a little single high, but, uh, you know, here you're going to see a lot of safety rotations, safety blitzes and stuff like that. It's going to be key for him to pick it up, uh, understand it, but also the big thing about it is to play fast when you see it. Don't be shocked about it when you see it. See, the, see it, just react and go play fast. Does it help that Vic Fangio's defense seems to be kind of spreading through the league to practice against this defense? It is. It helps out. I mean, uh, you know, some of the time, you know, we're seeing a lot of three, four fronts, uh, five man fronts uh, at times, and it helps us out. Uh, see, you know, we've been seeing a lot of four down fronts, so you know, it it, it 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 changes our mindsets. It changes our rules in the run game and in the pass game and in our protection. So this would be great for us to uh, get ready for the season. That philosophy that they kind of have about kind of being willing to give up some runs to more defenders to taking away things downfield, and you're going to see it probably for the Packers as well. How, how does that make the job harder for your guys when you face defense like that? When you face defense like this, you uh, you know they're going to have two great edge rushers, you know, and they, and Denver has them, and, and you got to be able to protect, and they're trying to get really five one-on-ones if they can, and you got to be able to protect and get the ball, push the ball down the field. So. This would be a great test for our our, our, our O line and our and the receivers to, to get open with with that type of uh, pass rush. Adam had said the other day, I guess it was a few weeks ago, that there's like a, a back in the day button in the wide receiver room. Uh, <laughs> your guy was playing a lot of football, but how much do you view your role as position coach on the field, but also mentor to some of these guys too, helping to understand the nuances? I mean, I I do both, you know, and I, I try to make sure that. You know, I mentor these guys the way I I was mentored coming up at, from my coach, like Coach Mann, uh, uh, Coach Carmichael, how they mentored me. But also, I have to be that coach and discipline, make sure they're disciplined in the things that they're do that they're doing. But me myself, I, I tend to mentor a lot more because it helps them relax and play the game. All right, if I can get them to relax and understand the game. They'll play a lot faster. They'll be a lot calmer, and they'll go out and make a lot, a lot of plays. So, me mentoring, sometimes <laughs> I go a little bit further than most coaches are mentoring. So, because I, because I, 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 I can tell them I, I sat in all five seats or all six seats of the, of, of, of that room, being the number one guy, the number two guy, the number three guy, the number four guy. I've been the number six guy trying to make just that that's trying to make the team a last man on the totem pole. I've been the practice squad guy, and, and I can kind of tell those guys how to prepare their mindset. And if they listen, it'll help them get through through some of the problems that they have, and it'll make it go smoother. How useful is it to have Adam Thielen who's kind of had that exact same experience with you in the receiver room? It's great because me and him can relate to when we were the practice squad guy, we were the fifth guy. And, and moving up the up, up the up the chain of command and uh, and and now being the number one guy, you know stuff like that. That th those things uh, are really important for young receivers to hear. With another team coming in here, you maybe notice that the guys are a little more amped up, or is it just another day? No, they're you know I I would say they're amped up. They understand that seeing a different color, you know, I, as training camp. Uh, Goes along seeing the same color sometimes, you know, it, it kind of gets a little boring, but you know, you still got to do your job. And now you see a, a, a different color, a different enemy. It's time to go, it's time to pick up the enthusiasm and let's play football. Have you talked to Adam about the 